The world of Parasport is more than medals and accolades. Join hosts Greg Westlake and Travis Morrow as they delve deeper and examine the important issues impacting sport. This is Beyond the Field. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Greg Westlake. Recent events around the world have put a renewed focus on ensuring that people of diverse backgrounds are welcome and have a voice in all areas of life, the Parasport world included. Later in the show, Travis catches up with wheelchair basketball legend, Richard Peter, to talk about his experience. But first, we're joined by Kieran Block. Kieran played in the Western Hockey League before his injury and transition to Paradise Hockey, where he made Team Canada. Kieran, thanks so much for being here today. We were teammates on Team Canada for such a long time, but we never talked about the topic of racial diversity and what you went through as a hockey player. So I can't wait to have this conversation. It is a, it is a big topic right now. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's cool to get the opportunity to talk about it because uh, sometimes I forget that it does impact me as much as it does. And I sometimes just brush it off. So yeah, awesome. One thing I love about your story is that you competed at such a high level of stand-up hockey and then made the transition to para ice hockey. With that unique perspective, I'm just curious if you feel like athletes from marginalized communities face the same issues in the para sport world as they do in a larger sport community. Um, yes and no. Um, the, like the politics, for sure, they do play a part in both worlds. Um, it, it, just like in anything, it's, it's such a relationship game. Um, who you know, sort of who you're connected to. Um, but w one thing I found that I thought was pretty cool in the sledge hockey realm, I mean, still there's very few uh, ethnic minorities in, in sledge hockey, but uh, I found it to be very open and accepting of, of just all people, um, just because of the wide range of abilities and disabilities that, that people had, it, it sort of was already a smaller community and it lent itself well to just adapt and adopt whoever wanted to participate in the sport. So. I found that when I went into the sledge hockey world, I, I, I saw just different people with different abilities, ranging from intellectual abilities to physical limitations, and everyone was just sort of smiling, and it, it just felt like a, a warm community. I, I didn't feel like uh, I was targeted as much, um, and if I was, it was more of my ability that I was uh, so able-bodied versus uh, my, my ethnic minority basis of, of my skin color. I'm glad to hear that, I really am. And one thing I've never asked you, but I'm very interested to hear your answer, is as you progressed from the grassroots level into the Paralympic level, what was it like joining a team as the first and only black player on Team Canada? No, and you know what, like I, when I discovered that just recently, actually, I, I thought like, wow, like I, I think it's so cool that I, I got an opportunity to be the first. Um, I never really thought about it when I was working my way up, I mean, just walking in the Team Canada dressing room before my first game, it was like, I'm putting on the jersey. And I saw so many of my friends in the stand-up world get an opportunity to do that, and it was pretty cool. And I I, I was very excited and honored for, for my first, uh, uh, like my first time to be able to put the jersey on. So I, I focused more on that, but when I actually did sit back and realize that there wasn't too many uh, black players Asian players, East Indian players, even in the world, it, it kind of struck me when we would play in, in a, a team like Norway and their backup goalie would be black. And it's like, you, you almost get that special nod to that guy uh, as we walk by, because there, it, it was me and him. Yeah, and, and with so little diversity, it's important for athletes and organizations to be allies. So I'm curious, what should people do when athletes face racism? Uh, I think you can acknowledge it. I think we get afraid to acknowledge it um, at times. Uh, I know uh, in one of my uh, last uh, games against Swift Current, there's a player that, that called me a racial slur in the game. And I I mean, I kind of snapped, I lost it. And uh, and the ref literally just said, I heard it, I heard it, I heard it. And it like de-escalated me completely um, in the heat of the moment of, of hockey and the frustration and the emotion that was behind it, I was like, I was at a stage where it wasn't comfortable for me. And um, I, I got an apology from their hockey team, um, from the organization, just taking some ownership and, and, and just acknowledging what was said, uh, acknowledging that that's not 
you know, your beliefs. And uh, I think that goes a long way, at least for me. So um, just acknowledging it, I think is, is really important on that front. It sucks that you had to experience that, but I'm glad you felt supported. I really am. Uh, did you ever feel that same overt racism in the parasport world? I, I haven't really faced it in my, from the players. Um, and I think just because of what we talked about being disabled, um, just connecting on that human level. It's like, guys might not have liked me, but it wasn't because I was black. It was because I would pick them as I skated by in a delicate way so that nobody knew. And then I would turn and smile at them with like a cheeky smile. Uh, the only impacts that I, I wouldn't really, I, I say this lightly and delicately, um, again, just that coaching perspective. I, I had a, really a lot of struggles in my career. Um, from just not classifying to getting cut from teams when honestly, like in my opinion, which whatever it is, what it is, it's, I'm pretty biased on it. I don't think I should have been cut. And um, and I, I, I do wonder, I do wonder if, if my coach was black in sledge hockey, would that have changed things? Because it's hard when you have a, a white coach, uh, white manager, um, white assistant coaches, like, the, and then it's like, not only am I, I'm, I'm, I'm black, but I'm also disabled. I'm also the first. So it's like, I, I do wonder, you know, would my coaches have been more tolerant of me? I'm more accepting of me. Would I have related better to my coaches if they were black or they were at least uh, some kind of uh, ethnic minority? Uh, and and I, I have thought about that um, because uh, I didn't have anyone. And, it, and that goes, I, and again, I, I say it delicately, but it's like that goes all the way up in Hockey Canada. Where's my representation in, in Hockey Canada? Who in Hockey Canada isn't white? I, I couldn't tell you, you know, any coach that I've ever seen that's not white in Hockey Canada. So uh, I think it is a big systemic issue, um, honestly. Um, and I, I think it'd be great at this stage of the game, there's enough black players out there. There's enough black people out there. Um, Cause even as I coached, it was like, uh, I wasn't even considered a as a coach for the sledge hockey team uh, when I was just purely coaching uh, as a, uh, as a three-time national champion associate coach, I wasn't even considered to be brought in um, ever within the sledge hockey team. And why, why is that? So yeah, I guess, yeah, the, that representation in, in Hockey Canada would, would be nice. It makes sense. You bring up a great point about representation and why it's important for players to feel like they're in a safe and heard environment. Uh, Kieran, this is a topic that I wish we touched on so long ago. You gave us so much to think about. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no, thanks for having me on. And I think this is great, Greg. Like the, the more conversations like this we can have, I think the better uh, because it does just raise that awareness and you talk about it, it normalizes those experiences and then you can uh, look to share a lot more later on. So thanks again for having me on. More to come on Beyond the Field. You're watching Beyond the Field. Welcome back, I'm Travis Morrell. In our first interview, Kieran Block raised some interesting points while discussing his experience as the first and only black athlete on Canada's para ice hockey team. And I'm interested in furthering the conversation on diversity with Richard Peter. Richard, or bear to teammates and friends, is a five-time Paralympian and three-time gold medalist in wheelchair basketball. He's also a proud member of the Cowichan tribes. Richard, it's great to have you. Travis, yeah, good to see you. Let's start at the beginning. How did you get involved with para sports? I got injured, yeah, at a young age. Um, grew up on Vancouver Island, city of, city of Duncan from Couch and Tribes. And I actually, I grew up as a kid, I was one of the only kids with a disability. And so I just played and had a lot of fun with my friends. So I didn't play any pair of sports until I was probably, I'll say like 15-ish. <laughs> I was a teenager and a uh, wheelchair basketball demo team came to my school. And that was the first time I'd ever seen any pair of sports. So actually at the moment, at that time, I didn't want to participate. I was like, no, I don't need to play any wheelchair basketball. I'm having fun playing sports with my family and friends and hanging out. And But I'm very, very glad that I did get out there and give it a try. <laughs> now, growing up, you didn't have any access to para sports within your community. Would you say that's the norm for remote Aboriginal communities? That's hard to say if that's the norm um, because it's really any small town. Um, Unfortunately, for para sports, there's a lot in the ma major cities. 
And so once you get into the rural communities, then that's much harder. And so that's the big thing that once, um, well, especially for me too, that once I got injured, I went back to my home community and didn't get as much information about parasports and also SCI, um, spinal cord injury information. Um, so that was yeah, a bit of a challenge and a big learning curve for me and my family. I bet. Now at the age of 19, you moved to Vancouver to take the next step in your wheelchair basketball career. What was that like? Uh, first, I was I was very excited. Um, that probably really sparked my my love of travel and meeting new people, new cultures, and so I've really enjoyed that all my uh, sporting career and, and life. Um, but yes, uh, being a well, anytime you're a new kid on the block, it, you always get a bit of a whether it's teasing, but then also yes, racism. I mean, I think one of my first major tournaments probably in Vancouver. I came over and, and received quite a bit of flack, but I, as a young kid, you know, it was pretty hard on me. And so I went back home and was, I always chatted with my grandparents and, and I was sitting in, in my grandfather's garden. Um, he passed away many years ago, but I sat there and he noticed that I was a little bit down. And so I was chatting with him and, and we talked about it. And, and the bottom line was that he said, all right, well, Richard, you know, what do you, what do you want to do? Um, I said, yeah, I think I'm going to quit this sport. I don't think it's really good for me receiving too much flack, but, and he really put, you know, instilled some great words into me and said, well, he said he supports me and says, yes, you know, I'll support any decision you make, but do I love sports? Do I love playing wheelchair basketball? And, and I said, yes, I do love that. And he's like, all right, well, don't allow that person to take that away from you. If, if you still love what you're going to do, then, you know, continue on with that. And, and that's what really, you know, helped me. Um, because yeah, I, I won't say that was the only one time. There was a few times, and and so that always helped me to, um, I guess yeah, to enjoy the sport. And and that's what I try to instill with anybody that I meet now too. I'm like, all right, if you really enjoy the sport and activity, then yeah, don't let anything, you know, take that away from you. Try to do as much as you can to stick with it and enjoy it, and hopefully the better things will overcome the the negative effects. Wow. What an amazing story. Your grandfather really stepped in at a pivotal moment in your life with some sage advice. So, do you think that Inuit and First Nations athletes still face some of the same barriers and racism that you faced when they're entering the parasport world? Unfortunately, with you can pick any sport, there still is a lot of racism. I mean, with Black Lives Matter, that, you know, that's, you know, opening up a lot of different um, stories that are coming up out of the woodworks and and so they've always been there with all different cultures um, and that's one of the big things that are happening all over the world um, and a lot of people do say oh it's great Richard uh, it's great that you represent Canada and live in Canada it must be a great country to live in and I'm like yes it is but as a minority there still is a lot of racism in all different communities um, you know might be harder to see in a, in a large city let's say it's Vancouver or Toronto but then once you get into the smaller communities, then you do see a lot of issues that are happening there. So let's say when I've, whenever I work with uh, either at GF Strong or with wheelchair sports or wheelchair basketball, then that's one of the big things that I always try to do too, that if we do have a new athlete that comes in to try to make them feel as safe um, and try to get out there and, and feel, you know, as secure as possible that, that there's no hopefully no issues that will arise here and just that it's a safe space that they can come out and, and just enjoy the sport. Um, Cause that's what I always try to say is that if you don't enjoy your first interaction with the sport, whether it's recreational or a high level, then yeah, you might not continue with it. So I try to make sure that you have a, at least an enjoyable time and, and continue on and yeah, have a good time. Yeah. I think that first experience is just so important. I know that when I started playing wheelchair rugby, having another Asian teammate on the team, really helped me kind of feel included just because it was such a white dominated sport. Now, do you feel parasports has a diversity problem? Unfortunately, as I was talking about earlier too, that, you know, it's, you know, many other athletes around the world that say, oh, it must be great to live in Canada. And, and I say, all right, yes it is, but there still are issues. And I've had that in my career. And I know that still does happen. Throughout my whole career on the wheelchair basketball team for five Paralympics and close to 20 years that I was, one of the only, um, well, I was the only um, Indigenous athlete on the national team. There were a few that came out and tried here and there, and and so we supported one another, but it is tough being the only Indigenous athlete at times, and 
and it's not just the indigenous community all minorities are are at a bit of a going uphill whereas some other uh, athletes might be having to eat on a flat playing field and so there's definitely a lot of different barriers and so it's um, it's a continuous battle with with all athletes and and like I was saying that's again where I try to just be as supportive I can and just try to help out to make that um, sport or in, our activity as enjoyable as possible and I'd say a lot of things that happened to me in, in my my past have helped me become the guy who I am here today and I guess that's why you guys called <laughs> that's exactly it Richard it's been great talking to you and you know what I just want to thank you for taking the time to be such a great role model for me when I was a young athlete starting parasports you made a big difference in my life well thank you very much Travis and, and AMI for having me on here today it's been a a joy and, and it's great just to share any kind of stories. Thanks again. Stay tuned for more Beyond the Field. This is Beyond the Field. Welcome back, I'm Greg Wesley. And as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, Travis Morrell. Travis, today we are talking diversity in para-sport. And I'm curious, from your personal experience, have you ever faced any racism or discrimination in your sport career? Uh. Well, Greg, I got to say that when I heard Kieran's interview, I really found a lot of, a lot of parallels to my own sporting journey where, uh, you know, at first playing hockey, football and baseball growing up, I experienced a lot of racism and I encountered a lot of it. But once I entered parasports, I found the environment to be a lot more welcoming and inclusive. And a lot of it has to do with um, just the parasport world and how they're really inclusive and they're welcoming, welcoming of all athletes. And it really helped to have an athlete like uh, Richard Peter in my area where, you know, a guy like, uh, like Richard Peter casts such a large shadow where, you know, if there's any racism or intolerance in that community, I mean, you're gonna have to deal with Bear. And I think that did a, it went a huge way to making that environment he a healthy one for me when I started sport. Because once I started playing internationally, I realized that that wasn't the case for all athletes out there well it's it's so great to have that support you know uh you referenced kieran's interview and i never realized that he might have had those moments where he felt alone and didn't have an ally and you know looking back i wish i could have supported better you know what what advice would you give to somebody who maybe doesn't have a bear man that's a tough question because i think to have another ally um is so huge especially when Kieran talked about the acknowledgement piece of how that made the, the situation better. So I would say just route, using your teammates to rally around you and letting them know that acknowledgement matters to you. And when you do encounter racism, if you can come together as a team and they can all acknowledge it, it really goes a long way to, uh, to helping things out. And I gotta ask you, Greg, uh, as a white athlete, were you surprised to hear any of these stories of discrimination? 100%. Well, one thing that really opened my eyes was just realizing how different two experiences can be. You know, if you take Kieran's experience on Team Canada and my own experience on Team Canada, in my eyes, I thought we were having a similar experience. And it turns out that we weren't at all because he never felt represented. He never felt like there was a staff member that he could relate to. We never had it. We never had a black coach. We, we have never had a black coach. And so some of those coaching decisions, we, you know, when, when he doesn't get ice time or taken to a tournament, you know, he questions the validity of that decision. I never even thought about that because I always just thought they were always just hockey-based decisions. That thought would never cross my mind. So that's the biggest thing for me is just how different two similar experiences can be. And so I, I think it's just, it really opened my eyes to having a 360 degree view of, of all situations and, and what other people might be thinking about. Uh, the other thing that I think about is just the travel part of it. And I'd love to know your, your experiences once you get outside of Canada or, or even outside of a province or your community, does that change things on the ratio of uh, scale? Yeah, I think uh, that's a great question because, man, I really noticed that once you start traveling internationally, uh, different countries have different um, accepted standards in their societies. And it can be a little jarring at first, but where, that's where that uh, team component and acknowledgement really comes into play where you know, I've had some experiences on the road that um, could have been really, they could have made me feel really isolated and uh, really alone out there. But my team really came together and we all had a good laugh and 
people acknowledged like, oh, that situation was really messed up and it became something that really brought us together rather than made me feel alone. So I'm really thankful for that piece. Well, and the other thing that kind of makes me proud to be a Paralympian is hearing these stories of how in the parasport world, it's actually a bit more accepting and there's a connection on a deeper level of, of having a disability and helping somebody day to day. Um, and you mentioned that you touched on that a little bit, but could you expand on that? Yeah, I think uh, in the parasport world, there's a great attitude towards people who are different or maybe people who, do, who look different where um, in parasports, we're so used to all ranges of disabilities that when we see somebody who's different, we say, oh, you're different, that's cool. Like, it's, it's seen as something special and something that's valuable. And I think that's really cool. I mean, how about you, Greg? Have you had that same experience in parasport? Do you find it a more welcoming environment? Do you think it is? Yeah, I definitely do. And it's, uh, like, like I said, it's something that I'm very proud of. Uh, very proud to be a Paralympian and, and be in a community that accepts everybody, that just wants everybody to be their, their truest, best self, you know, generally speaking. I, I know that there's been some tough experiences out there. But, and again, I'm not qualified to, to even touch this topic. So uh, I like to think that we're very inclusive. I, I know for myself, I, I've really learned through these, these interviews and these chats that it's not enough just to think you're inclusive. You, you have to actually speak it. You have to actually put actions to words. And so that, that's one thing I'm definitely taking away from this. That is something to think about, but unfortunately we have to end the conversation there. Thanks for joining us today. And as always, if you wanna watch more Beyond the Field, check us out at ami.ca or on the AMI app. Hosts, Travis Morrell, Greg Westlake, producer Ted Cooper, associate producer Alex Smythe, editors Manuel Grados Andrade, Matthew McGurk, integrated described video specialist Ron Rickford, audio post Mike Monson, graphics Mike Smith, senior producer Michelle Dudas, president and CEO David Arrington, copyright 2021, Accessible Media Inc.